I don't have any slides, but first of all, let me thank you for the invitation to be here and allow me to participate. I know we spoke about this in London, and I'm so pleased to see the forum uh, materializing. Uh, I think it's been tremendous to put it together and got the quality of presentations that we've got. I think it's been absolutely tremendous. And it's provided me the opportunity to work again with Pat Kelly and uh, uh, Kimberly and Rachel, and of course with you, Joy Avi. There's a lady who I've known for years, of whom I have a tremendous respect, and I want to thank you, Joe, for your leadership in public health over the, the, the years. It's been really tremendous. Uh, it's also given me the opportunity to meet again with my friend Francis, who has uh, quite properly left the room when I'm speaking. <laughs> uh, I'm surprised, supposed to speak about, uh, from a low middle income com com country, country perspective, but I suspect that we wish to refer more to not so much low middle income countries, but really to poor countries or poor communities, as the public is not only national, as the public, we talk about public, we, do, we not only speak of the national public, but also the local public. And just briefly, the, the problems we have with uh, public-private partnerships uh, with the poor is that the lack of resources uh, by the poor and uh, this inequality in terms of negotiations. So we have an asymmetry of negotiation in terms of public-private partnerships when we deal with our, our, our poor communities, uh, as there may be uh, partnership between unequals. But the fact that there are partnerships between unequals does not mean that we cannot establish some general principles about uh, public-private par partnerships. And first, I, I, I'd like to be, I, I'm going to make some general comments of what I've heard from my own experience and the literature which I reviewed to doing my homework before coming here. Is which first, I, as I understand it, this forum deals with public-private partnerships. It does not deal with public-public partnerships or NGO public partnerships, or NGO private partnerships. So I'd like to restrict my remarks to that. Uh, that's, I intend to be restrictive, because my reading of the literature says, once we get out of, partnership, out of this into partnerships in general, there are different rules of engagement. There are different things to be thought of. So I'm going to be restrictive and deal with uh, public-private uh, part partnerships. And I think that in this context, there are two very fundamental types of public-private partnerships which have intrigued me. One, generally public-private, as public and private within the context of what is the modern state. I think of the modern state as con constituting the government, the public sector, the private sector, and civil society. So within that context, I think of uh, the, how I think of the, of, of the public and the, the private sectors, the public and the private sectors. But there's another aspect of partnerships with which I'm very concerned, which I hope the forum will address. Looking at the public in terms of the intergovernmental organizations that are part of the international public. So I like to think of public at both national and local, and public in terms of the international public organization, international public organizations, especially those that we deal with, 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 with health. And the other thing I, I, I'm very keen on, uh, your term says global health. And my concern with global health always is the inequity principle, the equity principle, as Francis stressed. So I like to think of public-private partnerships, one, with those two categories which I've pointed out, and two, in whatever we do, the whole idea of, it, of equity should be an underlying theme, underlying theme, because I think equity, I look at public health as the, the health of the peoples of the world with a special focus on the differences that exist, the, not differences, the inequities, the inequalities, there will be inequalities, but the inequities that exist in terms of the health of the world's people. That's why I see global health. So I think any action that is focused on global health, to my view, has to have the whole idea of inequity, as I said, as Francis said earlier, uh, being a fundamental part. I'm going to deal now with four, a couple of the things I've heard, and then uh, on that basis, make four or five suggestions of the kind of work I think that the forum might encompass and, embra and, 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 and embrace. And part of my experience in my previous incarnations and also what I've learned from, from the review of the lit literature. And the first, one of the things that has come through clearly, it has been put in different forms, but has come through quite clearly to me, and says, in a sense has justified my rather simplistic 
a, a, a prescription for ideal partnerships of any kind are three things. One, mutuality of interest. Two, specificity of purpose. And three, definition of resources to be applied. I bear scars to show that when we do not observe those three basic rules, the, print, the, the partnerships do not work. Mutuality of interest, specificity of purpose, and definition of resources to be applied. There's a normal tendency in all partnerships, as a colleague of mine say, a vociferous tendency. All partnerships tend to a state of entropy, and they will only be supported and only be maintained when there's energy into them. So I, I, I have, I think that a forum like this has to think of partnerships in a time scale, not only, I think the, 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 what was pointed out, my colleague, the colleagues from UPS was absolutely marvelous, but those were, in a sense, ad hoc partnerships. And if you're thinking of partners for global health, we have to think not only of the ad hoc partnerships, but partnerships of longer duration. So with the emphasis being on partnerships of longer duration, given the nature of the health problems, uh, global health problems, you have to think predominantly of partnerships of longer duration and not only the short-term partnerships that deal with the things like epidemics. So a lot of, you heard a lot about that today, some brilliant discussions on, 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 on epidemics. So these partnerships will need some energy to keep them together. They all tend to a state of entropy unless it is energy to keep them together. And we'll talk about where that energy might come from in a minute. The other thing that I heard of heard today is the, the mutuality of interest does not necessarily mean exclusivity of, 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 of interest. And while it is possible and fair to say that the interest of the public is defined almost by definition. That's tautology. It's, uh, it's defined almost in terms of uh, where it fits in the, in the context of the state. The, it is the public interest. So the public sector has the public interest uh, 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 up front. And the private sector, in my view, the interest is a, a generic interest. The private sector has different interests, but one of the underlying interests is to provide goods and services at a profit. So I'm only speaking about the for-profit uh, private sector, not the non-for-profit private sector, the for-profit private sector, provide goods and services at a profit. And while the private sector may need uh, some specific public needs or wants, and uh, I think as Jack pointed out, we have to be very careful to separate the two, and we have to find mechanisms for, de for determining what are the community needs and, and, and wants. Uh, also, the part of the interest of the private sector uh, to strengthen their brand. But the thing that uh, comes home very clearly to me, and was said here on many occasions, the partnership with the private sector must be based on the, the private sector's particular business case. You're not going to have an effective private sector partnership that goes outside of the essential business case of the sector, of the sector involved. And but people have said, again from the literature, that you can look at shared value as corporate social responsibility plus benefits. And we have to remember that benefits are not only financial benefits, but they may be non-financial benefits. And it was said, said uh, during the discussion that you can find companies benefiting in terms of the morale of their uh, uh, employees, et cetera. Um, I think many of us have heard President Jimmy Carter talk about getting uh, DuPont to make the nylon film for addressing guinea worm and going to speak to the nylon employees and seeing big men weep when he spoke to them about, uh, and women, weep when he spoke to them about the good they had done providing this filament. And one of the things I heard him point out is that the absenteeism was much, much less on the days that the company made that particular filament. So these are one of the benefits, non-financial benefits that a company uh, uh, de 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 derives. And while the, the persons who define shared value, uh, I always say that there has to be an economic value proposition if, the shared, if, the, if there's going to be shared value. Some people say that it may be a value proposition, it's not necessarily economic for there to be a, 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 a shared value. However, I think there always has to be a correlation between the partnership's objectives and the normal mission and work of the business. That is how the private sector works best. 
And most of the discussions on private, uh, uh, public-private partnerships, I have found that, uh, in essence, I can divide them into, into, into two, really. A, uh, focusing on a specific prop, uh, product to develop a vaccine, a specific technology, I would say, uh, to develop a vaccine, uh, to develop a drug, to, to, to build a highway, a, a specific technology, usually. And the other one is a specific kinds, a specific service, a technology or a service. And in many parts of the world, the provision of services has become almost the major area in which private, public private partnerships uh, 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 operate. Uh, if you look through the, the the developing world, there's a greater and greater reliance of the private sector uh, to provide some of the services that once upon a time the public sector uh, provided. And uh, a good example of that is Sanya Nashta's book, Choke Pipes, describing in Pakistan this kind of uh, uh, a relationship. And in there, uh, we, they point out that relationships now in that, in that ag agreement between the public-private partnership that relationship can morph into what we call a principal type relationship in which the private sector is hired by the, 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 the public sector. And we all know the constraints of the principal type relationship in which one tends to uh, uh, value uh, uh, wealth creation and the other tends to value public value, public, pub public value. Uh, at one extreme, Maybe this principal type relationship at the other extreme, maybe this stewardship type relationship. And we like to think, we like to think that in most public private partnerships that last for a long time, there's a tendency more to the stewardship type relationship in which there's compatibility, almost identity and shared, uh, uh, shared uh, uh, values and shared interests, and is not one valuing uh, 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 one set of one set of of, of, of results more, 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 more than the other. Now, in terms of the public, of intergovernmental inter organizations, in terms of the, of the yeah, uh, we have a problem because many of the international organizations now are having great difficulty in relating to the non-state actors. And I think this is one of the great blows of freedom this forum could strike. How do you have an adult discussion about the role of the private sector in relation to these intergovernmental organizations? It's a topic that no one wants to touch it. And I think that this is an area in which the uh, forum could strike, a, I said, a great blow for freedom. And now briefly, uh, I'm going to set out five things, I think, from what I've heard and what I've read might, see, might form part of the, 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 the platform of the forum's uh, 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 work. One, I think it would be very useful from the beginning to have some basic understanding of the uh, taxonomy about the public-private partnership, some basic document which sets out some of the history of it, the evolution of PPPs, the current situation of PPPs, the challenges of PPPs, the, the, the uh, PPPs in terms of their duration. I think there needs to be some uh, solid body uh, of research into producing something of that nature. The second one is, I, I repeat myself, more attention to the public in terms of intergovernmental organization. That is a major gap that is not being filled by anyone, not being filled by anyone. I would encourage the firm to think about this. The, the other third area is to some, get some idea of the areas in global health in which PPPs will be maximally affected. One, in terms of diseases, and I would urge that the forum look at the a balance between, in terms of diseases, in terms of diseases and technologies as one group, and other in terms of systems uh, 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 as, as another group where we can uh, 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 look, look, break the, this further. In terms of the balance, I go back to the discussion about the, the, the health security and would insist, as I said before, that this attention, the hysteria created that guides public health is something that we have to uh, watch again. 
after the plague, which is like this like 25% of the US population, famous uh, French mathematician Poincare said, the plague was nothing. It was fear of the plague that was the problem. Uh, the, the, th the fourth area I would urge, I would suggest that might be a, a useful area for discussion and exploration is the distribution of PPPs. Distribution of uh, PPPs in terms of geographically, because what will happen in some groups of countries that may be separated uh, in terms of resources, uh, geographical distribution of PPPs and also the th thematic distribution of PPPs, that might form something uh, for discussion at the forum, which I think might come out of this basic documentation, which I hope you'll pr uh, uh, produce. And the last point I would, uh, would say as a, a, a suggestion for consideration is evaluation of PPPs. In the literature, there's very little evaluation of PPPs. I saw an evaluation of, uh, uh, of PPPs in Europe, which they look at the possibility of uh, public-private partnerships for health systems, health services, and they came to the conclusion that they were useless. Uh, the evaluation of the uh, a very detailed evaluation in Europe came to the conclusion that the public-private partnerships did little more to enhance health outcomes than did the public, uh, the, the public sector uh, uh, discharge in its pristine role. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great. Thanks so much, George. Ambassador Lang, would you like to go next?